The Truth About Goblins Chapter 28 It was hard not to doze off after their long trek, but Sephira had already volunteered to take over and wait for the messenger. The fact that Timothy was finally asleep in the adjacent room was enough consolation to keep her on guard. Neither of them knew when the message would come, or how. All that Timothy said was that they had to stay alert while they waited for it. Sitting at a table overlooking the deck, she stifled a groan. The suspense was terrible. At least the cottage itself proved to be well equipped, not to mention far more comfortable than she had expected. There was a wood stove, a fireplace, three bedrooms, and even a sitting area with a comfy couch. It was almost like being on vacation a treat that Sephira never had the chance to experience. She would have enjoyed the serenity of the forest much more had she not been so anxious to receive the message. It was all she could think about. It was understandable that the slightest noise or movement would make her jump. Twice before, she had knocked over her tea as a rodent or other small animal skittered across the front deck and it took all her resolve not to leap to her feet as she heard another rustling. This time, however, she stayed in her seat, convinced it was just another chipmunk. But the noise didn't go away. She left the table. Should she wake Timothy? It sounded as though the rustling was coming closer, and as it approached, it sounded more and more like footsteps. She opened the door to the deck and stared into the forest. Hello, she whispered. Convinced that she heard someone, she raised her voice. Who's there? Hey there, cutie pie. She recognized the voice right away. Kit, what on earth are you doing here? Relieved as she was, she was irritated to find him all the way out in the woods. We came to deliver a message said Annie, stepping onto the deck. Raven sent two members of her murder to tell us that they might have a lead on that Donovan guy. Well, that's great news, she admitted. But couldn't it have waited until we got back? We're kind of busy here. But that's just it, she said, her excitement mounting. Turns out that someone who knows Donovan is staying at a cabin, right next to where we're all standing right now. Safira gasped. Really? That might be our contact. Why don't we go and find out? said Kit. Never mind all this waiting around. Quiet, she warned. Timothy's sleeping, and I'm not sure how he would feel if he knew we were... The door slid open behind her. All three turned and gasped as Timothy stepped onto the deck. He seemed scarier in the dark. But his intimidation faded as he exclaimed. My goodness, what's all this about? No one knew what to say. They came to help, said Sephira quietly. Kit, Annie. He struggled to believe the sight before his eyes. What are you two doing out here, at this time of night, no less? He sighed and stepped aside, leaving the doorway open. Well, there's no sense in talking out here. Get inside. I'll make us all a cup of tea, and you three can explain what's going on. They all entered, grateful to shed the darkness of the forest for the cozy interior of the cottage. Kit spotted the couch and made himself at home while the others found their places. Timothy was already preparing the kettle. Nice place you got here, said Kit, stretching out on the couch. It had been a very long walk. Move over, said Annie, taking a seat next to him. Sephira took the armchair by the fire. Yes, it's much nicer than we were expecting. Very cozy. Although she was talking to the two on the couch, her eyes were on Timothy, and her thoughts were weighing the consequences of her friend's sudden arrival. Timothy cleared the coffee table and set down some mugs for the tea. Now, it's not that we don't appreciate your being here, he began. I mean, it's nice that you're here, but it's not. Not nice, I mean. Or rather, it's unfortunate. Uh, I mean, jeepers, 
exclaimed Kit. Spit it out, man, or we'll be running around in circles all night. Uh, yes. He bit his lip and turned back to the kettle. How about you two start by telling us why you're here? He cast an anxious glance towards the couch. If that's all right, of course. We're here to help you find Donovan, said Annie. His head snapped to attention. How do you know about Donovan? When neither Annie nor Kit offered an explanation, his eyes traveled to Sephira. I told them, she said, unable to meet his gaze. I thought they could help. And we can, said Kit, jumping to his feet, map in hand. You came here to look for the guy who knows Donovan, right? Timothy was visibly agitated. Yes, he admitted. But why? Your contact is literally a walk away, said Annie, also standing from her seat. She pulled the map from Kit's hands and thrust it in Timothy's face. There's a cabin near here, another cabin, and the guy who's in there might know where Donovan is. Her eyes lit up with excitement. We could go see him right now. Yeah, said Kit, eager for action. Yes, even Sephira was caught up in the frenzy. Let's not sit here and wait, if we know where he is. Let's go now. Wait just a minute, exclaimed Timothy. He glanced at the map in his hands, frowning. Let's not lose our heads all at once. We can't simply go out into the dark at this time and... Why not? said Sephira. If he's close, why can't we go and meet this man instead of waiting for him? I was told to wait. He handed the map back to Annie. I don't want to jeopardize an already delicate situation. Oh, come on, you big wuss, urged Kit. You saying you don't want to see this guy? He might have the info you're looking for. That may be true, he admitted. But I was told to be patient. I was told to wait. But Timothy... Sephira grabbed his arm. He's so close. Can't we at least take a look? What if, by waiting, we lose our chance? It will be impatience rather than inaction that will compromise this meeting. He turned away. I was told to wait. Timothy! No. He shook his head. I'm sorry, but it's too great a risk to hazard at this point. I know you want to help, and I'm very grateful for it. But for now, I think it best that we wait. That I wait. He walked over to the kettle and pulled out a teapot from one of the cupboards. This is my son, after all. I have to be firm in my decisions. Of course you do, said Sephira. She cast a final glance towards her friends, warning them not to interfere further. Annie wanted to put up more of a fight. But as Timothy joined them near the fireplace, her resolve faded. His face, usually bright and lively, looked haggard, with dark bags under his eyes and a heavy tug at the edge of his lips. He seemed to be held together by a thread. But his careworn appearance lifted as he poured himself a cup of tea. He brought it close and breathed in the steam. Tea tastes infinitely better at night, don't you think? I guess, muttered Kit, filling his own cup. They sat in silence for the longest time. Every once in a while they would sit to attention at sounds made by the wildlife outside, but they would slump back into their seats as the noise died away. The suspense was eating away at everyone's nerves. Timothy, in particular, was high-strung, jumping at sounds that existed only in his mind. Twice already he had spilled his tea, and when he spilled it a third time, he covered his face with his hands and moaned. Just give it up, said Kit. Look at you, you big worrywart. You need to sleep. Yeah, agreed Annie. We can stay awake and keep listening for you. He glanced at each of the kids. I really shouldn't. Don't worry about it, said Annie. Kit and I can hold down the fort. You and Sephira should get some rest. But are you sure, said Sephira, yawning. What if something should happen? We'll wake you guys up, don't worry, said Kit. 
Timothy stood, also yawning. I have neither the heart nor the energy to argue any further. Are you sure you two will be all right? For crying out loud, just go, said Kit. Bedtime, both of you. A nap will be nice, admitted Sophia. A long nap. She turned from the couch and headed for her room. Good night. Wake me up as soon as the message comes. Timothy followed suit and opened the door to a small bedroom at the back of the cottage. If something happens, come wake me. Don't hesitate a moment. He lumbered inside and closed the door. And then they were quiet. As the minutes passed, they waited. Through the thin walls of the cottage, they listened for Timothy's weary body to stop its constant tossing and turning. It seemed to drag on for hours. But at long last, there was silence. Kit withstood the peace for a moment or two before he snuck his way towards the bedroom. Putting his ear to the door, he listened. Still and quiet, a wide grin stretched its way across his face. Timothy was asleep. Annie rose and joined him, both making their way across the cottage to Sephira's room. The door to her bedroom creaked open as they approached, and out she came, signaling for all of them to remain silent. Her hiking boots were already on her feet. Hardly making a sound, she tiptoed to the deck and opened the door, gesturing for Kit and Annie to go through. They disappeared into the night without so much as a word, and Sephira, after casting a glance back into the cottage, followed. I'm sorry, Timothy, but it's for your own good. She slid the door closed, turning to the dark forest ahead. I can't stand to see you like this any longer. Hey, hi, I'm your narrator, Miranda Eastwood, also the author of The Truth About Goblins. If you liked this chapter, remember to add, follow, or subscribe to this channel so you can hear the next one. And if you didn't like this chapter, <laughs> oh well, I can't really do anything about that. In any case, I just thought I'd let you know about my Patreon. You can check it out if you'd like to throw some support my way. It would mean a lot to me. Not to mention there's loads of extra exclusive content that I only post on Patreon. While I'm at it, I'll mention that The Truth About Goblins is now available as a complete audiobook, and you can get it wherever you get your audiobooks. Thanks for listening! <laughs>